Canada. Uh, recently, um, during the call to bar, last two weeks in Abuja, my wife traveled to Abuja representing the family got the flight ticket and all the money involved is too much. I didn't go. So a guy came, my third daughter, you know, started telling me that day I'm having, a pain, I'm having pain, serious pain around this place. And as a man, I cannot, a grown up girl, I just graduated from university, start telling my daughter to open and let me see. Then I have to call my wife, I told her, man, that their daughter, look at what she's explaining, you know, she's complaining about. I don't know what to do. At the time, you know, the next day, the thing persisted, the pain. And I've already booked my wife uh, this flight ticket, return ticket. I don't know how to, you know, ask her to cut off the reward. This is the program and all that. So, look at the old thing, not, nothing to that. And I recall what our pastor, the provincial pastor, told her one, two, three, you know, Wednesdays ago, that we should lay hand on whatever we have and all that. So I asked my daughter, please meet me in my room, climb up, come to my room. And as she came, I said, kneel down, your father, your biological father. Kneel down, and I placed my two hands on her, and I prayed. And I, after praying, and I anointed her, I said, go. The next day, she said, okay, that day I will be going, to, I used to be to go with this pain. Because I wanted to call her doctor that I'm bringing her for surgery, you know, surgery for maybe I said, because the pain was too excruciating. Said that I will go. She managed to be what she's doing clearance in the school because she has already finished her law this year. And then the next decision, she said that that is you know no longer. But I tell you, since that day, you know, that thing has disappeared. Hmm. You know, without going to that doctor. I'm another another this is again, my another testimony is about my son. The three of them, two of them are done. The, the first one did the law, this book I called to but the second one also passed law and all that. So she also applied. Say, why must all of you be law? law? I, I, I train as an environmental DC. You know, why all, if you, all my children law, 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 law? They said that if two of us married, she would be in this place. That was how I She passed her, his jam. I think they did the jam with our pastor here, yeah, Pastor Dutu's uh, son, you know, the same place. And she, he passed the jam with the prostitute and missing. But since then, no reason, no reason. We, at the time, I even met the registrar. The registrar said, ah, BK, that's their son. I said, yes. Well, no problem. They I want to, to, you know, to our greatest support. They gave me English language. I said, what? English? To do English. I now go back. I went back to this. The registrar said, ah, what? They, how much they give my son this in English? He said, okay, we should apply for this change of course. We did. After this program, they already, I know I attended all of the program. After this program, on, this, on Monday, they called out that they give him admission for law. Hallelujah. So, praise the Lord. Who did this? Let somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. I stand here to return all the glory to the most high God, the excellent God, the I am that I am, for the salvation of my soul and that of my family and what he did for me since last year till now. He has been so faithful and marvelous. I said, may his name be exalted in the name of Jesus. By this time last year, I can't wear a short gown like this. I just don't know where the affliction came from, but the Lord knows the best. I can only wear a long gown with bandage with my leg. I said, Lord, I don't know where this one comes from. You gave me these two legs to serve you. I cannot creep. I cannot go with one leg. I need her wherever it comes from, Father, take it back. I don't want it. One faithful Wednesday, I came to this altar. After prayer, I meet Pastor Dotto. I said, Daddy, see my leg. He said, what happened? I said, I saw it that way. I don't know where it comes from. He laid his hand and prayed for me. Since that day, I was watching the leg. I can wear now, shotgun. I can walk freely without any complication on it kneel of the leg. I say, may his name alone be exalted in the name of Jesus. Amen. 2013, I, um, my, my heart burned. I was in the camp at Lagos during conversion. I don't know what happened. Everywhere burned through my children. Even my little, my last baby had two legs burned. If you see it now, you see. 
But reaching again this year, the enemy came again. Two days ago, I was just cooking. The gas was on, I was just cooking. I just by the side of the pipe, I just see frame of fire, boom, everywhere. I said, Lord Jesus, I, I'm just coming back from your house now. Don't, allow, don't put me to shame again. I just ran fast and off the cylinder. We start to use towel to quench the light. I thank God that affliction does not repeat itself again in my life. I say, may his name alone be exalted in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thirdly, by this time last year, I was crying, asking God for my house rent. I don't know where to start. I don't know where to go. And it's not one, one naira. The day we came here, our dad, the PICP, said that when you go home, lay your hand. Tell God that that problem that is bothering you. After I went home, I, my decision, uh, my decision letters of this year, I lay my hand there and said, Daddy, I want my house trying to be paid. I don't know where to start, but you know best. And the Lord did it in a marvelous and wonderful way, which my mouth cannot even express. We are, I don't even hope to have that house rent. And the Lord did it in double fold. I said, may his name alone be exalted and be magnified in the name of Jesus. Amen. The next testifier, please. Church, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My name is Sister Tonya. I want to return all the thanks and glory to God. For some time, my family, my sisters, my siblings were all like as in talk of war. We're not talking to each other. But there was a time the pastor was praying here and he said something about forgiveness, to relate forgiveness to people. I found it difficult that day, but by the grace of God, I had to let go of that forgiveness. After that, the things started turning around for me. My sisters have not spoken with her. They have not talked to me for a long time. Yesterday, I was able to connect with my younger sister. From there, my elder sister, that is the police commissioner in Lagos, she called. She had to talk with me. We had to settle. I want to return all the thanks and praise to God. And I also want to thank God for my last daughter, my little girl. She's in Tokishna University in Abuja. She's doing software engineering. She's really doing excellently. I want to return all the praise to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't even know where to start. I want to say thank you, Jesus. I've just, I just come to here to say, God, thank you. Because 2022, God did some wonderful things in my life. And it's as if the enemy we are not happy. And I know they won't have to be happy. Because no, the devil cannot be happy for anything good. And it became as if my career, my ways have been short. Throughout last year, each money that enter my account, enter a leaking pocket. I don't know what to do. Money will be entering. I didn't even know money is entering. I will not see the Allah. Before I will see Allah, the money is gone. It took me time. But I'm here to say, God, thank you. Thank you for everything. I can't narrate all. But from that time, all the things I do that brings money to my way, every door was shut. But at last week, at this last uh, uh, week of videos, as we are coming, I was not asking for anything. I was not telling God, God, my way must be open. I don't struggle before to get money. How come is I see if even 10 naira become too hard? God forbid. It cannot be me. I was just telling God, God, healing and miracle is healing and it's miracle. I'm not coming for healing. He will give me miracle. And to God be the glory. Only him alone be lifted. God, those shut doors, I declare that they are already opened. They are open. I'm here to thank God for what the Lord has done and what the Lord is doing. And what the Lord will continue to do, only Him alone be praised. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The next testifier, please. Let somebody shout, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to appreciate God for the salvation of my soul. I want to thank Him for joining messes. I want to appreciate God because um, Friday, the 29th of March, my first son will be 21 years. I want to say this God that has done this. May his name be highly exalted. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Daddy, please. Uh, the keyboard, I want the keyboard, please. I want to worship God this little. Um, who say there is no God in this house? There is God. There is God. Ah, there is God. 
I bless you, Lord, you are holy, and forever you are God. I bless you, Lord, you are holy, and forever you are God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, you are God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, you are God. I want to thank God because God is doing something in my life. I want to say thank you to God on behalf of my provincial pastor, my father in the Lord. I want to thank God for Pastor Dotsu. I want to thank God for Mommy Andrew that just gave testimony here. This woman encouraged me to be here that God is doing something. Right from the first day I entered into this place, things started turning around for good. Last time, I know this is my eye, I always to go to places. Something happened on Wednesday last week. Daddy was praying. He called me. I just came out and met him. He was praying for me. He was telling me, Are you seeing me? Are you seeing me? I was struggling with a little star just entered into my eyes. Just little star. I saw Daddy putting on blue suit. And that day I fell down. And I know I returned all glory to God because I know my healing is already coming. You do not lie. You do not fail. What is hard for you to do? It doesn't exist to. It can never, never exist. Ha. You do not lie. You do not fail. What is hard for you to do? It doesn't exist. It can never, never exist. Church, will you join me to be upstanding and appreciate this God for all this wonderful testimony you've heard? Let's give him praise. Let's worship him. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. As we call the testimony with the blood of Jesus, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let me just uh, add to, for the benefit of our brother and everyone here, listen carefully. When hands have been laid on you, how do you maintain what you received? Number one, when the enemy brings thoughts that are contrary to your healing or to whatever it is you are trusting God for. You need to use your mouth to confess that hands have been laid on me, the anointing is at work inside of me to bring about that thing that you are trusting God for. Are you there? So in our brother's case, I would do it like this. Hands have been laid on my eyes. The anointing is at work in my eyes to bring the total restoration of my sight. And you begin to thank God. Anytime you think about it, you lay hand on your eyes and say, hands have been laid on my eyes. The anointing is at work inside of my eyes to bring my my. To, to bring total restoration of my sight in the name of Jesus. Father, hands have been laid on my eyes. The anointing is at work inside of me, bringing about complete restoration of my sight in the name of Jesus. Father, hands have been laid on my eyes. The anointing is at work inside of me, bringing about total restoration of my sight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, the reason I'm saying this to us is that it might not necessarily be 
your sight. Amen. For somebody that was blind to see that I was actually wearing a navy blue jacket and light blue shirt, he could have mistaken the blue shirt for white. It looked like white. Amen. For him to say that I was wearing a blue suit, it can only be God. It cannot be man. So let's, let's join our brother and say, Father, thank you for restoring your son's sight. Go ahead and thank God. Father, we give you thanks. We give you thanks. We give you thanks that you have restored the sight. We are witnesses of a genuine miracle. We are witnesses of a true miracle. Lord, we thank you because the anointing is on him. The anointing is at work inside of him. We bless and exalt your name. Thank you. Thank you, my father. Be thou exalted forever and ever. In Jesus' matchless name, we give thanks. Can you put Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 on the screen? He said, he that has begun this good work. He will do what? Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. Let's read together. One to go. Being confident of this very thing, that he which had begun a good work in our brother will perform it until the day of Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are confident, we are confident that you that started this good work in your son, you will not only perform it, you will perfect it. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 12. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 12. Can you put it up for us? 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 12. God told Samuel, when I begin a thing. Let's read together. Want to go. In that day, I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house. When I begin, I will also make an end. Our father has started the healing and the restoration, healing of his eyes and restoration of his sight. Let's ask the Lord, Lord, as you have started healing your son's eyes, perfect the restoration in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and talk to the Lord. My father and my God, in the name of Jesus, you are the one who started the healing of his sight. Father, finish the restoration of his sight. Finish the restoration of his sight. Finish the restoration of his sight. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Daddy, we thank you. You are the miracle walking God. You are the miracle walking God. You are the Alpha. And Omega, you are the miracle walking God. Hallelujah, you are the miracle walking God. Hallelujah, you are the miracle walking God. Hallelujah, you are the Alpha and Omega. You are the miracle walking God. One more time, you are the miracle walking God. Hallelujah, you are the miracle walking God. Hallelujah, you are the Alpha Omega. You are the miracle walking God. Daddy, we thank you. You are the one, according to Job, who performs miracles that are too many to number. Thank you. Please accept our worship in Jesus' name. Daddy, this morning, perform miracles. Heal. Deliver. Set free. Glorify your name again. Let people know that you are in our midst. Thank you, my Father. I pray that you will think through my mind and that you will speak through my lips. 
that I pray that none of me but all of you and that Jesus and him alone be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Jesus said something very interesting. He said, if you see me, you see the Father. Please be seated. God bless you. He said, if you see me, you have seen the Father. There is no point asking me, show me the Father. Once you have seen me, you have seen what? The Father. So you want to know what the Father looks like? Look at Jesus. Amen? You want to know what the Father looks like? Look at the Son. Praise the name of the Lord. And one of the things that Jesus did, and that's why they have that song, everywhere he went, he was doing good. Almighty healer, he healed the leper. When the cripples saw him, they started walking. Even today, my God is doing good. You know, he, everywhere he went, the Bible says in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, who went about doing what? Doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. If God was with him when he was healing all, it means that it is God's will that all be healed. Are you there? Are you there? Did you get that? If God was with him when he was healing all, it means that it is God's will that all be healed. Amen. Even till today, it is still the will of God that we all be healed. Amen. And if he performed miracles everywhere he went, it means that it, and God was with him while he was performing miracles, it means that it is God's will to perform miracles. Amen. So whatever the miracle that you need in your life this morning, because you are here, you will receive your miracle. Yeah. Oh, I thought I'd hear a better amen. Yeah. Our amens are weak. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so last week we started talking about the Holy Spirit and miracles. So I want to continue the Holy Spirit and miracles part two. But I want to give us some ten points to note concerning the Holy Spirit and miracles. Ten very important points to note concerning the Holy Spirit and miracles. Number one, always remember that the spiritual realm is real. Amen? You see, we live in this world, but there are two parts. This world that we live in, that we see, there is still another form of existence that we don't see. Are you there? Are you there? The one that we see, I see you, you see me. But there is another level of existence that we don't see because we are still in this flesh. And that's the spiritual realm. And there is no better person than the Holy Spirit to help us to navigate in the spiritual realm. Are you there? Because he is spirit, and the spiritual realm is his realm. Praise the name of the Lord. That's point number one. Point number two, that spiritual realm that we don't see determines what we see in this physical realm. Always remember that. Before anything happens to you physically, something had happened in the spiritual realm. Are you there? So when you were sleeping in the night, when you were supposed to be praying, some people were not sleeping. Some people were doing their incantations and the things that they did, if you are not strong spiritually, if you are not born again and reading your Bible and you go and toy with your father's house, your mother's house, the wickedness of the wicked will finish that person. Why? Because the spiritual determines the physical. Job chapter 1. When you get home, please read the story of Job. Just read chapter 1 only. Amen. Before the thing began to happen to Job, what happened? A conversation took place in heaven. Are you there? 
You don't know how many conversations are taking place on daily basis. On daily basis, conversations are taking place. Conversations are taking place. Some to your advantage, some to your disadvantage. Sometimes when God, God can choose to show you some of the things that are going on, so you have a dream. You have a dream and you see something. That's why we need to pay close attention to our dream states. Are you there? You dream about something that is good. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, let it come to pass speedily, speedily, speedily. And you bind every spirit of delay. Delay, you will not delay this one in Jesus' name. But you dream of something that is not good, you cancel it. Say, Father, that will not happen. I cancel it. In the realm of the spirit, I cancel it. In the physical, it will not come to pass. Are you there? If Job had seen the day that the sons of God appeared and the devil appeared before God and if he was privy to the conversation that took place he would have stood his ground and said father I reject that it will not come to pass are you there are you there so the spiritual determines what we see in the physical number three healings and miracles are in the spiritual realm first of all first of all they are in the spiritual realm so you can bring them into the physical and I'll show us in a minute. Amen? Your healing is already... See, on the cross, Jesus settled everything about healing. The Bible says, who him own self bore our sin on his own body on the cross, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness. By whose stripes is he you were present, past or future? It had already happened. Your healing had been settled before you were born. But it is in the spiritual realm. Are you there? It is where? So you have to know how to bring it to physical materiality. So healings and miracles are in the spiritual realm, first of all. That's where they are. Number four. They form part of what the Bible calls God's riches in glory. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, Paul said, But my God shall supply all your riches according to, all your needs according to what? His riches where? In glory. They are in the glory realm. The riches are there. The healings are there. The miracles are there. The signs are there. The wonders are there. They are where? In the glory realm. So you have to reach into glory and bring them down. Amen. So they form part of God's riches in glory that he supplies us. Number five. If you do not have access to the spiritual realm, you may not partake of them except God mercifully intervenes. Except God mercifully intervenes, the person might never partake of them if, if they don't have access to the spiritual realm. But we have access to the spiritual realm. True or false? We have access to where? The spiritual realm. Number six. Through the Holy Spirit, believers have access into the spiritual realm. See, listen. Never forget that you are a spirit. You have a soul and you live inside this body. Now, this body is what you use to contact the physical. Through this body, I can see that the sun is shining outside. Through this body, I can feel that the weather is hot today. Are you there? Through this body, right? But through my spirit, I can know that it is the will of God that I should be healed. Through my spirit, man. Why? Because the Holy Spirit lives inside of my spirit. So through my spirit man, the Holy Spirit enables me to have contact with the spiritual realm. Through my spirit man, the Holy Spirit enables me to know the things that belong to me in the spiritual realm. Praise the name of the Lord. So through the Holy Spirit, believers have access into the spirit realm. And that's why I told us last week, Pay close attention to where? To where? Huh? Ah. Ah. 
That's the most important point to, of all we said last week. The most important point is pay close attention to where? To your inside. Because it is inside of you, way, way, way inside, that the Holy Spirit will guide you and will show you. If you are looking out, we said, we made a statement last week, said the mistake many people make is that they are looking for the Holy Spirit, but they are looking outside. No, 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 no. He's not outside. He's inside of you. That's why it's good for us to study the Bible and meditate. Meditate. When you are meditating, you are thinking about the Word. That moment, the Spirit inside of you is running it over and over with the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit begins to pass information concerning that Scripture to your spirit man. Suddenly, you will see something that you never saw before. Are you there? That thing that you saw that you never saw before, it was the Holy Spirit that whispered it into your spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. So through the Holy Spirit, believers have access into the spiritual realm. Number seven, the Holy Spirit makes spiritual things real to believers. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12. Paul said, We have received not the spirit that is in this world, but the spirit that is of God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Are you there? So it is by the Holy Spirit that we know the things that God has given us. You know, for example, some people don't know that it is their blood covenant right to be, heal to be healed and to live free of sickness. They have bought the lie of the devil that sickness is part of normal life. Some have even called it their cross. Are you there? I'm sure you must have heard some people say, well, that's my cross. Fibroids is my cross. God did it. Uh -huh. Fibroid is, yeah, it can be in somebody's lineage when you were not born again. But the day you got born again, you left that lineage and you became a child of God, it's, it should no longer affect you. Are you there? It should no longer, you remove yourself. I have been exempted. I have been exempted from the evils of my father's house and the evils of my mother's house because I became a child of God. Are you there? So everything that belongs to Christ belongs to me. And everything that belongs to God belongs to Christ. So everything that belongs to God belongs to me because I am a joint heir of God with Christ. We need to, we need to appreciate the Holy Spirit for the great things that God has kept for us. So it is through the Holy Spirit that we know the things that belong to us. Number eight, Jesus said that the Holy Spirit will glorify him. John chapter 16, verse 14. How? Because he will receive from him and give to us. He says, he shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. He will take what belongs to God, what belongs to Jesus, and reveal to us. That's how he, he glorifies Jesus. So one of the things that belong to Jesus are miracles. Amen? The blessings of God that make it rich and added no sorrow. All the things that belong to God, they belong to us. Number nine. Faith is very crucial in downloading miracles from the spiritual realm to physical materiality. Faith is very, very essential. It's very crucial, very important, critically important. As a matter of fact, without faith, I can assure you that unless the mercy of God steps in, you cannot receive anything from God. He says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh unto God must believe that he is and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So without faith, Zero chance of receiving any miracle. Zero. Zero. So faith is very crucial in downloading. Remember we said the riches of God are in glory. So faith is the avenue through which we reach into glory and bring those things down. Amen? Faith 
is the currency with which we transact in the spiritual realm. Faith is the what? Currency with which we transact in the spiritual realm. So when you want healing, you go to glory. You reach into glory by faith, and you use faith to bring healing to bear on your uh, physical circumstances. Number, number 10, faith is of the Spirit. Now you see the relationship between the Holy Spirit and our miracles. Faith is of the Spirit, which means, number one, faith is spiritual. Number two, faith resides inside of our spirit. Romans chapter 10 verse 17 says, So then faith cometh how? By hearing first and by hearing the word of God. How do you hear the word of God? How do you hear the word of God? How do you hear the word of God? By speaking the word, listening to the word, and meditating on the word. So when you are reading the Bible, don't read the Bible silently all the time. Speak it out. Speak it out. It says in John chapter 16 verse 13, How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. You begin to say it out, you begin to say it out, as you are saying it, it will settle inside of you, that when the Holy Spirit comes, he will guide me into all truth. So you surrender yourself, I surrender to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Spirit of God, Jesus said, when you come, you will guide me into all truth. I surrender to your leading now. You are guiding me to the truth. You are guiding me to my miracles. And miracles are truth. Amen? Because they, are, they belong to God. And God is true. Jesus is truth. Sanctify them by thy word. Thy word is truth. John 17, 17. Amen? Praise the name of the Lord. So you begin to confess these things and begin to confess them. As you are confessing them, they are building what you call faith inside of you. Until suddenly, ha, you realize, oh, this is it. And you hold on to it. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So faith is of the spirit. So there is something you call the spirit of faith. Jo uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. Can you put it up for us? 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. It says, we, having the same spirit of faith as it has. Let's read together. I want to go. We, having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore... So, if you look at that scripture, if you look at that scripture, that is the key to miracles. That is the key to obtaining your miracles. That is the key to bringing down your miracle from the glory realm to physical materiality. He says, you having the same spirit of faith. What is the spirit of faith? The spirit of faith is the spirit that believes and speaks. You speak what you believe. And that's why unknown to many, they lose. Why? Because they speak what they see. They don't speak what they believe. But when you speak what you see, for example, I... I, I and I sneeze and I say, hmm, looks like I have a cold. What will happen? My nose will begin to run and I'll begin to sneeze. Why? Because I accepted what was going. It was on its own. No? The Bible says it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. But as it was passing, I decided to accept it by confessing it. Because Mark eleven twenty three says, you shall have what you say. Not what you think, not what you hear, not what you feel, but what you say. Are you there? So we need to pay close attention. It says we having the same spirit of faith, we have believed. Therefore we speak. So you only speak after you have believed. So like our brother that we prayed for today, our brother will now say, Father, I thank you because hands have been laid on me. My sight has been restored. I thank you because the anointing is at work 
to bring the total restoration to pass. I thank you. Lord, you are the one who showed me the color that the pastor wore last week. That, it means that you have healed my eye. Therefore, perfect what you have started. Are you there? Perfect what you have started. I refuse to let you go. Perfect that which you have started. You put your hand there. I refuse to let go. Lord, I thank you because you have healed me. Hands have been laid on me. The anointing is at work. Perfecting my healing. So I confess that my sight, are, my sight is perfected. My sight is perfected. I believe I can see. I, I believe I can see. I know I can see. I can see. I can see. I thank you for my sight. I thank you for my sight. I thank you for my sight. Praise the name of the Lord. I told us for many years, I would lay hand on my head. Every day I was having my bath, morning, afternoon, night. And how many times I had my bath in a day, my hand would touch it and I would confess it. For how many years I, I did that, I don't know. But I know that one day I looked for it, the growth was gone. Are you there? Because you shall have... You shall have what? You shall have what you say and the spirit of faith the spirit of faith works, works like this you believe and you speak 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 how do you believe you believe by saying this thing to yourself because belief is of the heart you see the you see Maybe one day we'll talk about the mouth, the role of the mouth in our miracles. Because it is confession that brings possession. Are you there? It is what? Confession that brings possession. You cannot possess what you have not confessed. Hmm. You miss that? Let me say it again. You cannot possess what you have not confessed. You know, you need to see it before you can have it. And I'm not talking about physical sight. I'm talking about spiritual sight. You see it in the realm of the spirit, then you will have it in the physical. Are you there? Are you there? So they tell a lady that because of this, because of that, she cannot have children. And then she goes to the Bible and she sees in the Bible that the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 14 that none is barren in the land of God. And you take that scripture and you meditate on it, 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 until you get to a point where you and that scripture, you agree. Are you there? And you are saying to yourself, God said, no one is barren. No one. If God says no one is barren, it means God did not create anyone to be barren. If God did not create anyone to be barren, it means barrenness is not from God. If barrenness is not from God, then... It means that I can tell barrenness to live, and it will live. Why? Because it's not from God. If it is from God, then I cannot command it to live. But if it is not from God, I can kick it out. Are you there? Are you there? That is how faith develops. Then you get to the point where you know that you know that you know that you are not barren because God did not create you barren. Oh, but the doctor said they have discovered. Yes, they can discover. No, 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 no. They can discover. They have every right to see. But as my uncle, you know, I have this uncle who always tell me stories about uh, Babalao. He used to tell me stories about Babalao, that they would go to Babalao. So he said, whenever he went to Babalao, and the Babalao told him what he didn't like to hear, he would tell the Babalao, you didn't see it well. <laughs> he said, he didn't see it well. <laughs> As long as whatever the Babalawo told him didn't agree with what he wanted, he would tell the Babalawo, you didn't see it well. Look at it again. So you, you, you get to the point where even when the doctors, the best, the best in their field, they come and say it is their considered opinion. 
professional opinion that we have, I have done this research, I have seen, and I have had 50 years of post-graduation practice. This thing has never happened. That this thing can never happen. Therefore, madam, go and adopt. That's where some of us will just feel weak. No, 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 no. If you feel weak, it means your, your strength is little. It means your strength is little. Go and build up your faith. Build up your faith. The doctor told me, November 2007, Northwest Washington, D.C., one of the best uh, fertility doctors in North America, he told me I can never father a son, a child, I should go and adopt. I told him, thank you, doctor. I said, but I have a problem. He said, what's the problem? I said, on the 31st of August, 1999, God told me the name of my son. And then he repeated it through another brother. Told the same brother the name, same name he told me. And then February 2000, God told me, thou shalt have a son, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. I said, I believe God. I thank you for your professional opinion, but I believe God. And I left it. My wife was there sitting next to me when he told me this. Are you there? Who is he that speaketh and he cometh to pass? When the Lord has not... And when these boys came, listen, <laughs> even if I want to deny, eh? even if I want to deny that these children are not my own, I'll be lying. Because God made, particularly David, to be a spitting, even my K-leg, he copied my K-leg. So you cannot deny. Are you there? Are you there? See, so whose report will you believe? But this is where the Holy Spirit comes from. I mean, this is where the Holy Spirit plays the role. Because it's the Holy Spirit that helps you to know these things. And then when you know, you will, know, you will have this knowing inside of you. That's why we need to pay close attention to what goes on. The Bible says, keep your heart with all diligence. Because out of it are the issues of life. The issues of faith, what you allow inside your heart, what you allow. If I tell you, you know, and this is the gospel truth. This is the gospel truth. I have not put on, is it channels? Is it CNN? The other day I was in an office and I saw a CNN news bar and they said something happened to Trump. And I said, ah, have they given judgment? People looked at me, where have you been? Are you there? You see, because the more you chew this thing, yeah, the more you chew this, the more you agree with what it says, and the more you agree with what it says, the greater, the stronger your faith is to stand your ground. No matter if, let the whole world, let the whole world come together and say something. If it is contrary to this, the world can go and perish, oh, I will hold on to this. Let me be the only person. Let me be the only person. I will hold on to it till I die. Are you there? We need to get to that point. And it is only the Holy Spirit that can help us. So we want to continue. Can we continue today where we stopped last week? We looked at point number one last week. I just gave us these 10 points just for us to know more about how the Holy Spirit helps us. So last week we said the Holy Spirit is a person and you must know him as a person that you can relate with. Today, and maybe we'll continue next week. Number, point number two is that we must know and recognize his voice. We must know the voice of the Holy Spirit. One of the things, somebody asked us after when they realized that, I remember I came to this church in November 2013. I was APICP, Rivers Province 3, and I came to this church to preach. And I said to them that, that then I didn't have children. The children hadn't come. And I said to them that one of the things, one of the reasons why I know I, can never, I cannot die is because God made me a promise that he has not yet fulfilled. And until he fulfills that promise, no death can... That if you're afraid of flying and you see me enter plane, enter that plane because that plane cannot crash. Why? Because God made me a promise that he has not yet fulfilled. 
And what's the promise? He told me the name of my son. He said, until that boy is born, until that boy is born, no death can take me out of this world because God is not man to lie. I had that confident assurance. I declared it here November 2013. Are you there? So 2015 January, when Isaac and David were born, it was news all over RCCG because everybody heard and everybody knew that this man had been saying this thing, this man had been saying this thing. It was one of the things that moved my mom and my uncle. My uncle would tell me, ah, you were saying this thing, no. Yeah. Because people came with all kinds of advice. Now tell them, look, <laughs> my son is coming. God had told me the name of my son. Are you there? My mom looked at me, looked at me. He said, you know you have been saying this thing, no. You know you have been, because she used to harass my wife. What are you doing? You, because, the people looked at us, it looked as if we were not serious with children. We had this confident assurance that the God that we serve cannot lie. Are you there? That thing that makes you have that kind of confident assurance is the Holy Spirit. And is the one that makes your miracle sure. The miracle will come. I said the miracle will come. Yeah. It says wait for it. Though it tarries, it shall come to pass. It shall not lie. The vision will not lie. So you must recognize his voice. You must recognize his voice. You must know his voice. You must know the voice of the Holy Spirit. If you don't know the voice of the Holy Spirit, mm, you see, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 10 says, there are many voices out there in the world and none of them is without signification. All of them, there are many voices. I heard voices, oh. I heard voices. Sanctimonious voices. You know, voices that sounded pious and holy. All kinds of voices. You must know his voice. John chapter 10, verse 27. I'll stop there today. We'll continue with knowing his voice next week. John chapter 10, verse 27. Jesus said, my sheep, do what? My sheep, do what? My sheep, do what? So it follows that if you are his sheep, eh, you have a covenant right a blood covenant right to do what? So if you have not been hearing his voice, there is something wrong. Are you there? I told us my story in 1994. I will come to church on Friday, Holy Go uh, night, night, night vigil. We used to call it night vigil. Brethren will come to church and when it's testimony time, brethren, praise the Lord, though. brethren, praise the Lord. Though. As I was doing this, as I was doing that, then the Lord said to me, ah, the Lord said, the Lord said, and that person will come, and then the Lord said to me, the Lord told me, ah, the Lord told you. So I said, hey, ask him, because, don't forget, I was Catholic. I was born Catholic. Hail Mary, full of grace, Lord, is really blessed are down amongst you, and blessed, holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us, and that's not the other. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son. That's how we used to pray. Are you there? So, we didn't hear the voice of God in Catholic, did you hear the voice of God in Catholic church? I never heard the voice of God. I didn't even know God had a voice. So when brethren were saying, God said, God said, ah. So one day I said, ah, Lord, even if I was the worst sinner, I know I was a sinner, but I know I am born again now. Even if it's only once, let me hear your voice so that I will know, me, myself, not because Brad Sanusi said so, or because uh, Brad Destiny said so, mm -mm -mm. but because I heard your own voice myself. Let me hear. So I can know whether, true, true, you talk to people or you don't talk to people before people will lie to me one day. Are you there? So I began to pray. I began to pray. Thursday, September, Pastor Maxwell came to my house and I complained to him that I have not yet been baptized in the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in tongues. He said, I should kneel down. I knelt down. He prayed for me in my household. He prayed for me, laid hands on me. Nothing happened. So he went home. After he left, that night, as usual, I woke up to pray. And as I was praying, all by myself in my house, so I was still single then, all by myself, around 2 a.m., I heard myself speaking. But not my language, not English language, not any language I knew. 
I heard myself speaking. Ah! I paid attention. I realized that, that ah, this must be what they are saying. Speaking in tongues. This was Thursday night into Friday. By Tuesday morning, I was worshiping God on my face. Five minutes to seven. I heard a loud voice from behind me. And I turned to see who spoke. I realized I was alone in the house. That was the first day I heard his voice. But the voice, the voice somehow was way deep inside of me, but it sounded as if the person was behind me. That was why I turned. He said to me, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. I didn't know then. Later I saw that that's what Jesus said. Inside Mark 16 verse 15. As I knew that Jesus came and spoke to me, I turned to see him. He wasn't there. Are you there? So you must know his voice. You must know his voice. Let's turn to our feet. You must know his voice. Miracles are everyday occurrences with God. But many are not seeing miracles because they don't know the voice of the Holy Spirit. Many are not seeing miracles because they are not using faith. They are not applying their faith. They are not stretching their faith. They are not putting their faith to work. Miracle is of, is of the spiritual realm. You have to reach into this glory and bring it down to the physical materiality. So go ahead and just bless the Lord. Just bless the Lord. Thank God. He's the God of miracles. He's the God that performs miracles that are too numerous to count. Go ahead and thank him. Thank him for performing miracles that are too many to count. Thank him. Thank him for your own miracles. I don't know what miracle you are trusting God for today. Thank him for your miracles. Thank him for your miracles. Thank him for your miracles. Thank him for your own miracles. Thank him for your own miracles. Thank him for your own miracles. Him your own miracles. Bless his name for your miracles. Bless his name for your miracles. Thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him. Librando scali andele masunto libranda lima kaseki. Yendi bololi andele masunto librando scali andele masunto librando. Spirit of the living God, you are the one that guides us into our miracles. Holy Spirit, you are the one that helps us to even recognize miracles. Holy Spirit, you are the one that teaches us. Oh, you are the one that takes us by the hand and leads us in the way that we should go. Oh, Spirit of the living God, you are the one that actually performs the miracles. We surrender to you. We surrender to you that you might lead us into our miracles. That you might lead us into our breakthroughs. Holy Spirit divine. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' matchless name, we give thanks. I want you to talk to the Lord. Say, Father, take me by the hand. Lead me into my miracle, into my breakthrough. Go ahead and talk to him. Take me by the hand, Holy Spirit. Lead me, lead me, lead me, lead me into my miracle. Lead me into my breakthrough. Lead me into my miracle. Lead me into my healing. Walk me into it, Holy Spirit. I surrender to you. You are the only one that can help me. Help me, Holy Spirit. Help me, Holy Spirit. Help me, Holy Spirit. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. You're going to talk to him. Say, Father, I belong to you. Help me to hear your voice. Go ahead and pray. I am your sheep. I belong to you. Help me to hear your voice. Help me, Lord, to hear your voice. Help me to hear your voice. Help me to hear your voice. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Now, another place where many miss it, maybe we'll continue with that as we look at the voice next week, hearing from him, is that sometimes the Holy Spirit prompts us, but we are not responsive to the prompting. 
I shared my testimony of 2022 June with us. As I was praying, crying, confessing the word, and praying the scripture, deep inside of me, it was dropping like a still small voice, something. He said it the first time, I was, I continued what I was doing. Because as far as I was concerned, what I was doing was more important. But I thank God that he was gracious. He repeated it the second time, I still continued. It was not until the third time when he repeated it that I said, wait a minute. It got my attention that looks like God is trying to tell me something. So I said to him, Lord, you know I'm not a sinner. You know I don't sin by your grace. Why are you telling me where sin abounded, grace much more abounded? As I asked that question, I was still praying, no, but I was asking this question in my spirit, thought to thought. So he now asked me, what is sin? Uh, and what, what, are, what is sickness? It's a consequence of sin. What is healing? It's a, one of the benefits of grace. So he said, whenever the consequences of sin show up, benefits of grace much more manifest to swallow the... Ah! You see how he led me. He led me into my healing. If I had not listened to that prompting voice, because the voice that was speaking while I was confessing, I was confessing scripture. I was crying, I was in pain and confessing scripture. What I was doing was right. But he was trying to lead me to confess something else. Are you, are you there? Where I was going was okay, but he was taking me in another direction. So if I had failed to, and he was gracious, because he, he did it the first time, I didn't pay attention. He did it the second time, I focused on what I was doing. It was upon the third time that I said, there is something God is trying to tell me from this thing. Are you there? And I, and I paid attention and I ended up, till today, that thing is totally gone. Totally, completely gone. I don't take painkillers. You know, last night I was praying, I noticed that I, my head was aching. I said, Lord, by your wounds I was healed in the name of Jesus. Where is this headache coming from? Are you there? No painkillers. No painkillers. I said no painkillers. But the thought I'm trying to get to you is deep inside of me, something was steering me to do something. If I didn't listen to that, I would not have had this healing that I have that I'm testifying to. So I'm saying that so that you also will know how to pay attention to inside of you. No matter what you're doing, it might be pious, it might be right, it might be holy, but if it is coming from way deep inside, pay attention and do what he's trying to get you to do because your healing and your miracle lie in your obedience. Are you there? Uh, lift up your voice, say, Father, Father as, from today, as from today, help me to be sensitive to the promptings of your Holy Spirit. Go ahead and talk to him. Help me to be sensitive. As you prompt me, help me to recognize and help me to obey. As you prompt me, help me to recognize and help me to obey in the name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. I give you praise and glory. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Now, if you were here last week and I laid hands on you, so you are going to pray, like we said, for our brother to pray. I don't know what it is that you trusted God for when we laid hands on you last week. But you are going to say, Father, hands have been laid on me. The anointing is at work inside of me. Go ahead and thank him for that thing that you are trusting him for. The anointing is at work. Hands were laid on me last week. The anointing is at work inside of me. Hands were laid on me, my father. The anointing is at work. Yes, it's at work inside of me. Thank you, my father. Give him praise and glory. In Jesus' 
mighty name we give thanks. Now, those that we lay hands on today are those who were not here last week. Uh, if you were not here last week and you want me to lay hands on you, after we take the offering and close, you come forward, I will lay hands on you. But if I laid hands on you, now I'm teaching you a new dimension. If I laid hands on you last week, you are going to say, say to the Lord, Lord, hands have been laid on me. The anointing is upon me. And then you thank him for that thing which you are trusting him for. That's how to cooperate with the anointing. Hmm? That's how to what? Cooperate with the anointing. Otherwise, you can come every day with lay hands and you go back. If you go back the same, you remain the same. Hmm? You come with lay hands, you go back the same, you remain the same. But if you cooperate with the anointing, Father, hands have been laid on me. The anointing is upon me. Bringing about my healing, bringing about my deliverance, bringing about my restoration. You thank him for what the anointing is doing. What you trusted him for the anointing for last week. Amen. And so, Father, we thank you. I thank you because your anointing is upon your people. As they cooperate with the anointing, they will see they, and receive their healings, their miracles, their breakthroughs, and they will come and testify. I give you all the praise. I give you all the glory. Father, as we live here, we are not living in your presence. We ask that, Lord, your presence that we have contacted by being here will continue to go with us and manifest himself in our lives in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that your presence will bring about total healing, deliverance, and in the name of Jesus, your presence will give us victory. Your word says, and the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man. He was a prosperous man. Let your presence prosper us in the name of Jesus. Let your presence give us victory. Let your presence give us success in everything that we do in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you will send your fire from heaven and receive this offering from us by fire. Let the minister a sweet smell before you. In Jesus' name we pray. So bring out your offering. Bring out your offering and then the choir will sing and then continue singing. Once you are finished thanking God, you are free to go. Thank you, Jesus. You are the lover of my soul. Alpha and Omega, you are worthy to be praised. In all generation, there is no one like you. Alpha and Omega, you are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah.
Amen. Father, we thank you. Lord, as we enter into a session of praise and thanksgiving, please accept our praise, accept our thanksgiving in Jesus' name. My Father, as I lay hands on those who need hands to be laid on them, let it be your own hands that are touching them. Let them, whatever it is that they desire from you, at the touch of our hands, your hands, let them receive. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we are ready for you. Continue praising God as I lay hands on them. God bless you. God bless you.